Hi everyone. In this video, I'd like to go through the first part of the notes uh, that we're covering this week. And basically what we're doing this week is we're trying to learn about the anatomy of a muscle cell. And so what I do in the notes is first I talk about the different types of muscle that we have. So we have three different types of muscle. You're probably familiar with this, skeletal muscle, cardiac muscle, and smooth muscle. Uh, I'm referring you here to um, someone else's video on YouTube. And then these are Pearson videos if you want to take a look at the microscopic appearance of the muscle. So I think these actually might be good for lab uh, because they show you the appearance of the muscle from low magnification to high magnification. So check that out. Um, but just switching to a picture here real quick. The three different types of muscle that we have, skeletal muscle, cardiac muscle, and smooth muscle, are the same in that they have the characteristics of muscle, which is you can stimulate it and it will contract. So excitability is the fact that you can stimulate it. Contractility would be um, the contraction. And then um, this muscle can also um, stretch and it can rebound, recoil back to its original size. And so what's different is its anatomy, its cellular anatomy, and also its location. And so usually when people talk about muscle, they're talking about skeletal muscle. This is the type of muscle that covers the bony skeleton. And you can see how elongated the cells are. They look like fibers. Actually, they're called muscle fibers. A muscle fiber is the same thing as a muscle cell. And so these are very elongated. I'll talk about that a little bit. They have that striped appearance. That's known as striated. And um, skeletal muscle is voluntary muscle. And so our nervous system is controlling that muscle. Um, Cardiac muscle is um, only found in the wall of the heart. So it's only in the heart. It's, uh, when you take a look at this, looks very different from skeletal muscle. Looks kind of like uh, bamboo. It, it's striated, so it has that striped appearance. But again, it just makes up the wall of the heart. It's involuntary. And so luckily, we don't have to consciously will our heart to beat every, you know, second or, or quicker. Um, smooth muscle makes up the walls of organs. It's involuntary muscle. It's non-striated. You don't see that banded appearance. And so in this unit, even though we're calling it the uh, muscular system, really what we're focusing on is skeletal muscle. Okay, and so everything from here on out, all I'm talking about is skeletal muscle. I'm not talking about the other two types, even though you need to know about the other two types. So jumping back to the notes, as far as uh, functions of muscle, uh, movement, because muscle attaches to bones, uh, movement of fluids like uh, the, the muscle in the blood vessels, for instance, uh, maintaining posture and body position, stabilizing joints, we just talked about that in the last unit, that has to do with muscle tension, uh, putting, um, uh, putting pressure on like the bottom bone in a joint and that which stabilizes a synovial joint and heat generation. So a byproduct of muscle contraction is uh, heat. I've talked a little bit about the characteristics of muscle already, so I'll let you read that over. But all that first part of the notes is just about the three different types of muscle. And then, like I said, from this point on, I'm just talking about skeletal muscle. And really what we're trying to do this week is we're trying to take a look at the whole muscle, and then we go down to the cellular level, and then we go down to the parts of the cell. So we're just really kind of like drilling down to a cell and then learning the anatomy of one cell. That's where we are this week. And believe it or not, there's a lot of specialized anatomy in a muscle cell. So it's a really important week for us because next week is all physiology. And if you don't get this down, uh, it's, it's hard to put these pieces in motion when you don't know the parts. Okay, so as far as the whole muscle... The whole muscle is attached to the skeleton at the origin and the insertion, which we'll talk about in lab. The origin is a more stationary attachment. The insertion is usually more indirect, like through a tendon. When a muscle contracts, what it means is the muscle physically shortens in length. And so if you had a muscle, all muscles span a joint, say it's spanning biceps brachii, spanning the elbow joint, when you contract that muscle, it pulls on the insertion, it pulls the insertion towards the origin. Um, and so that's typically what happens, that the insertion gets pulled towards the origin. Uh, it can work vice versa. 
Uh, as, as an example, you know how sternocleidomastoid originates on the sternum and the clavicle and then uh, inserts up on the mastoid process. Um, and when you contract this muscle, you move the mastoid process down towards the origin, right? Insertion towards origin. But you could hold your insertion uh, really stable and move the sternum and clavicle up with sternocleidomastoid. People do that when they're having trouble breathing. So those are the attachment points. All uh, skeletal muscle, whole muscle, is uh, surrounded by three layers of connective tissue. This is really important to know. And so I made this video for you that goes through the layers of connective tissue and skeletal muscle. And um, basically I use a picture from the book to show you those layers, but I have those layers you know, here in this uh, picture. So just quickly, if this makes sense, the whole muscle is gonna be surrounded by this really um, fibrous, dense, strong uh, layer of tissue called the epimesium. Okay, that's what coats the entire muscle. And that, um, coating actually extends beyond the muscle and attaches to the uh, bone. So I'm going to take off my markup here just for a minute so you can see that and I'll move this again in a minute. Okay, so epimesium on the outer periphery and you can see how it's extending beyond where the cells are ending around in here. And that extension of the epimesium, that's what you call a tendon. It's just dense, regular connective tissue, like very dense in collagen, like I said, very strong. And it fuses to the periosteum of the bone. So they show us that in cross-section too. So here you can see is the epimesium surrounding the whole outside of the muscle. And then when I look inside of the epimesium, you know, from either view, it might look like a cell, but actually at this level, what those are are groups of cells. And so this is a bundle of individual muscle cells. Uh, that's called a fascicle. Okay, so here's a second fascicle, and you can see the muscle is filled with fascicles. So the fascicle, or in other words, this bundle of muscle cells, is uh, grouped together by a layer of connective tissue called the paramecium. So the paramecium, I guess, you know, you could say that's what I'm drawing in, in pink. Okay, that would be a layer of connective tissue that's deep to the epimesium that's bundling the muscles into these groups called fascicles. And it's also through the paramecium, you can see that the blood vessels, that's what these things are, this little circle, the blood vessels and the nerve supply will infiltrate, like be distributed through the muscle uh, to the individual cells that are in the fascicles. And so going back to this uh, bigger picture, do you see what they're doing here? They're pulling a fascicle out. So that's a group of cells, right? So that's a fascicle. And then they give us a close up on that. So I'm gonna have to um, erase my mark up here to move the picture. So taking a look at the fascicle. Okay, so this is a group of cells. They give us a cross-section of that. So this is the paramecium, right? That was that more elastic connective tissue that's grouping cells into the bundle called a fascicle. And when we look inside of a fascicle, here's where you see the level, oops, sorry about that, the level of the muscle cell. A lot of controls here. So here is an individual muscle cell. Okay, so these are cross sections through individual muscle cells. Of course, the muscle cell is gonna have um, a plasma membrane on the outside of it, but around the outside of the plasma membrane is another layer of connective tissue called the endomesium. So the endomesium, think of it as kind of like an elasticy girdle you know, that's gonna give the cell some um, structure to contract. Another thing you'll notice here is that they're bracketing a cell and calling it a fiber. So I already mentioned that. That's actually, I think, a, a hard thing to get in this unit. A muscle fiber is a muscle cell. So here, what they're doing is they're pulling out the muscle fiber. So this is a single cell. I can see there are multiple nuclei. That's what those bumps are on the outer periphery. So here's the muscle cell. It's surrounded um, by the endomesium, and then inside of the endomesium, oh shoot, sorry about that. Inside of the endomesium is uh, the plasma membrane. Okay, so there's the plasma membrane. I'm going to draw the endomesium again. There's the endomesium, which would be outside of that. And then what I want you to notice here, which I zero in on um, in my videos, is that the muscle is made out of these structures that we haven't encountered before. 
Um, so it looks very, very different from every other cell type that we've talked about. It's filled with this uh, cylindrical unit called a myofibril. Okay, so this is a myofibril, this is a myofibril, these are myofibrils in cross-section. You can tell by this cross-section that, you know, yeah, I can see some of the typical organelles, like here they're showing me some mitochondria, the cytoplasm is there, it's called sarcoplasm in a muscle. But really, primarily, what I see are all these myofibrils. So here's an analogy for you, see if this makes sense. If we were making a model of a muscle cell for a science fair, uh, what I would do is I would take a bundle of dry spaghetti, and I would shrink wrap a membrane over the top of that. That's basically what we're trying to describe here, where this cell is basically filled with all of these um, cylindrical structures, uh, these protein structures. These are called myofibrils. And the myofibrils run the length of the cell. Okay, and so what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the structure of an individual myofibril. So I hope this analogy makes sense. So the cell is filled with myofibrils. And we're going to take a close look at the individual structure of like one myofibril. Uh, this will be important for us to understand how muscle contract. So as I mentioned, some of the parts of the muscle cell have different names, still the same structure that we already know. Uh, the muscle cell is known as a muscle fiber. The plasma membrane is known as a sarcolemma. The cytoplasm is called sarcoplasm. Um, and then there's some variation. Uh, like the multiple nuclei, we looked at that briefly. Uh, there's a variation of the smooth ER found in muscle known as the sarcoplasmic reticulum. We'll look at that this week. A molecule called myoglobin is found in muscle. It's a relative of hemoglobin. And so if you know how hemoglobin stores oxygen and transports oxygen within the red blood cells, myoglobin is the same type of um, uh, structure, stores oxygen within the muscle cell many mitochondria, so that's going to speak to how the muscle is going to get its fuel to uh, contract. And basically, like we're talking about, the cell is filled with these subunits called a myofibril. So this is a picture from our book uh, that shows that during development, many small cells fuse together to form these big muscle cells or muscle fiber, and that's the origin of the multiple nuclei. So I hope that makes sense. And I made a video about that. And just to jump to our video playlist, you can see these are the videos that I'm referring to in the notes, different types of muscle tissue. Here's the histology, uh, mainly for lab. The layers of connective tissue. Uh, and here's the video that uh, goes through what I was just talking about, uh, overview of a skeletal muscle cell. So I do that with images. So I hope you like that. So what we do from here, knowing that the cell is filled with myofibrils, you can see, is examine the structure of a myofibril. So going back to the notes, um, each myofibril runs the length of the entire muscle cell. It consists of um, basically a, a repeating pattern of protein that's known as a sarcomere. It, has, it creates a, the banded appearance of the cell. So I explain that in the video, actually, with the picture. It will make more sense. Uh, and that's because all the myofibrils within a cell align. So again, you know, this is a video I just showed you, the structure of a myofibril, where um, you can see the sarcomere is aligning within the one cell. So please look at that. So now, if you understand that, what we do is take a closer look at a sarcomere. The sarcomere is the basic subunit of a myofibril. So remember what a myofibril is, is this, you know, basically like linear chain of sarcomeres. What is a sarcomere? A sarcomere is just a particular arrangement um, of protein fibers, known as thick filaments and thin filaments. And this particular arrangement is that the thick filaments run down the center of the sarcomere, and then the thin filaments come in from the sides of the sarcomere, both sides. They partially overlap where the thick are, but they don't come right into the middle of the sarcomere. Okay, so I describe that in the notes, and because the myofibrils within one cell align, that means that their sarcomeres are aligning, and it's this alignment of the sarcomeres that creates the banding pattern that you look at in lab, how the muscle is striated, how there's alternating dark stripes called A bands and light stripes called I bands. So um, I do go over that in great detail in this video, the uh, banding pattern. So I'm going to just... Um, refer to that for a minute. So in this video, I made this video for you. I mark up a myofibril 
and I show you the A band, um, the I band, I show you the H zone, um, the M line, the Z line. And so um, please look at that video for that discussion that will save us some time here. And then I also put a picture of this in our notes. And then, you know, once you get there, what you can do is you can think of this not only as like a 2D structure, kind of like they're showing here, but you can think of this as like a 3D structure because really a myofibril is a cylindrical subunit, right? It's not just flat, which means that if we took a scalpel and cut through the Z line or cut through the I band or cut through the A band, what would we see? And they cover that in your book and that's what they're looking at um, here too. So maybe think through that. So once you get um, comfortable with the structure of a myofibril, what we do next is move on to what is the thick filament, what is the thin filament. And the thick filament is made out of a protein called myosin. And I am going to uh, leave it to the video, my video to explain this better. So the structure of the thick filament, I do go over in detail, like the um, structure of a myosin molecule, how those mo myosin molecules are put together to form a thick filament. And then I do the same thing with the thin filament, talk about the uh, components that make up a thin filament and how those components are like woven together into the thin filament. Okay, so we need to know the structure of the thick filament. What is the structure of the thin filament? Okay, so I have the picture of the thin filament also in our notes, and here's the video that I'm referring to um, where I describe the thin filament. And then to, as if this isn't enough to close up the week here, uh, what we do is talk about the other um, features of the muscle cell, the sarcoplasmic reticulum and the t tubules. So those are brand new too. So I did make um, a video about this, a detailed video that shows this. And so I'm going to give you an overview here. Basically, the sarcoplasmic reticulum, that's that um, variation of the smooth endoplasmic reticulum that I referred to earlier. And the sarcoplasmic reticulum is it covers every single uh, myofibril within the cell. And remember, so it's it's inside of the cell. It's intracellular. And so in other words, if you liked my uh, spaghetti analogy, uh, surrounding every single myofibril, surrounding every single piece of the spaghetti would be the sarcoplasmic reticulum. Okay, so in this picture, uh, the sarcoplasmic reticulum, you can see it as kind of this like, I guess like this web or net that's surrounding the myofibril. So this is one cell. Here's a collection of myofibrils within that cell. And you can see how the sarcoplasmic reticulum is surrounding each myofibril. Almost like if you want to think of like the arm as the myofibril, like a sleeve, you know, uh, covers the arm. It's that kind of thing. So the sarcoplasmic reticulum covers the each each individual myofibril. And basically what it does is it store it uses energy to store calcium so that we don't have a lot of free calcium in the cell. Instead, the sarcoplasmic reticulum or the SR is using active transport to collect all the calcium and keep it inside. And when that calcium leaks out by simple diffusion, we use active transport to capture it and put it back in. So when the cell's at rest, uh, this, this, these muscle cells are very metabolically active. You can hear that, I hope, because we're spending energy 24 seven to keep that calcium stored in the sarcoplasmic reticulum. Uh, so that's what that is. And then the T-tubule, T-tubules, those are, I would say, like a, um, like a transit, uh, like a communication system within the cell. So I'm just going to zero in on this, but I do show this uh, in, in the video. So these are the T-tubules that you can see in this picture. You can see here's the sarcoplasmic, or pardon me, here's the sarcolemma. That's the plasma membrane. The sarcolemma, right? This is the outside of the cell. And so the T-tubules are the, these tubes that are continuous with the sarcolemma. So T tubules burrow into the cell. They're a continuation of the outside of the cell. And what the T tubules do is they surround every single myofibril the same as the SR. Okay, and so it, it's actually um, contacting the SR in a sense. Now, like this little thing, what they're just trying to show us here is that the T tubules are gonna open up onto the sarcolemma, onto the plasma membrane at various points. 
Um, but like they're showing us here, wherever you have a T-tubule coming in from the surface, you'll have many T-tubules coming in to this continuous um, tunnel that's formed at that level, and then that tunnel is gone. And then you'd have another tunnel uh, coming in, you know, and you can see that these T-tubules come into the cell at regular intervals. And so if this makes any sense, I'm not sure how uh, strong this analogy is. If I took like a needle and thread and I went in at one level and I just, you know, looped around every single dry spaghetti at one point, that would be like the T-tubule system. And then I cut the thread and then I'm going to start new, one inch down. I'm going to go around every single, you know, little thread of spaghetti, then I cut the thread. That's what the T-tubule system is. It's a continuation of the sarcolemma. And so this can get us thinking for next week about how we're going to trigger this cell to contract. The way you're going to stimulate the cell to contract, it seems like um, a stimulus somehow is going to be delivered to the sarcolemma. And if a stimulus is delivered to the sarcolemma, that that stimulus is going to be able to fall into this T-tubule system to contact every single myofibril regardless of how big you know and strong this cell is that that message is going to get through to every myofibril because of the t tubules so please um, watch the video that i made this one about uh, the sarcoplasmic reticulum and t tubules it's much more um, complete than my brief description here but that's what we have up for this week so please contact me with questions thank you